Hi there, my name is Mr. Coat, and in this video we're going to talk about the Perceptron algorithm, which is a basic and well-known algorithm within machine learning and pattern recognition. But before going into the details, let me first provide you with an overview of what we're going to talk about. First, I'll describe the problem. Then, we're going to derive the algorithm, and I'll explain how the algorithm works. After that, we'll do an exercise, which we're going to answer together. Then, I'll provide you with the pseudocode, and we'll go over it. And lastly, we briefly wrap up our findings where I'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the algorithm. And here, I'll provide you with a little outlook. So let's start with describing the problem. So we have the problem of classifying unknown objects. Based on a training set of objects, or a set of training vectors, we have to derive a way of deciding to what class a new object will belong to. For the problem, we have two classes, omega 1, and omega 2. And for these classes, we assume that they are linearly separable. Thus, in this case, we have four objects, which are represented by these dots, measured using feature x1 and x2, from two classes omega 1 and omega 2. Let's say that these classes are apples and oranges, respectively. We now have to separate the apples from the oranges. Now, because these objects are linearly separable, there are a lot of ways to make this work using a simple line. For example, this line will work, but also this line will work, and even this line will work, and also this line will work. In fact, there are actually an infinite number of lines to make this work, but we just have to come up with one to perfectly separate them for the problem. So by assuming this, we can assume in general that there exists a hyperplane described as the product of the transpose of a weight vector with x, where x is the training vector, that equals zero, such that if the value of this product is greater than zero, we classify x to belong to omega 1, and if this value is less than zero, we classify x to belong to omega 2. You might now wonder what if this product is actually equal to zero? Well, then this point is at the boundary, and we have to randomly assign the object to a class. And by the way, this hyperplane can also be shifted by some w0 weight by introducing an extra dimension, but I'll come to this. But the question now is, cool, but how do we obtain these weights? And this is actually the goal. We have to find the weights such that we can realize this hyperplane, or in our apple orange example, this line. Keeping this in mind, we will now derive the algorithm, and I'll explain how it works. What we can do is consider this to be an optimization problem. In other words, we have to define some cost function and simply minimize it. Using the resulting weights, we will have a linear classifier. But how do we define this cost function? Well, we can look at what happens when objects get misclassified. So here, this product of multiplying w transpose multiplied by x will be negative if an omega 1 object is misclassified to be omega 2. Similarly, this product will be positive if an omega 2 object is classified to be omega 1. We can consider these values to be costs and simply sum them. However, we don't like the negative values that appear here when misclassifying an omega 1 object as an omega 2 object, so we simply have to discard the minus sign and make it positive. Thus, we have the following cost function, with as input the weights that should be chosen optimally. In other words, we sum the following values whenever x gets misclassified by the product of the transposed weight vector with x multiplied by delta x, while well, delta x basically does the trick of removing the minus sign, namely in the cases where the training vector x actually belongs to omega 1, but gets misclassified as omega 2, we multiply with minus 1. And in the other case, we just multiply with 1, so nothing happens. Now that we have the cost function, we minimize it. However, we can't simply take the derivative, set it to 0, and solve it, because the function is continuous and piecewise linear. So the gradient function will be discontinuous. Therefore, we follow the gradient in an iterative way until we hit a local minimum. We now thank the mathematicians and get the following because of function, where rho here is the learning rate, and we are continuously trying to improve our weight vector. And this actually is called the perceptron algorithm. So now that we have actually derived the algorithm, I think it's time to apply this algorithm. So let's do that. Remember our apple orange example from the beginning? We're now going to design a line such that it separates the apples from the oranges. For this, we will actually use a simpler version of the algorithm, which is yet as powerful, and it trains by giving rewards and punishments. It's the same as before, but now delta is actually incorporated into these cases, 
as you can see here on the extra requirements per case. We will iterate over all training vectors computing the new weight vectors until the weights converge for all training vectors. In other words, we have to obtain n times the same outcome when applying this function and then the weights have converged. The reward in this context is actually the otherwise case in which no correction will be performed. I know this sounds like a rather harsh reward, but getting no correction in this sense is considered to be a reward. Now, assuming that our learning rate rho equals 1, and the initial weight vector is the 3D vector with containing only zeros, the exercise is to apply the algorithm, for our example, deduce the weights and derive and draw the classifier. But I could imagine that you have the following question. Wait, why do you give me a 3D vector? Well, that is because for the hyperplane, or line in this case, that we will develop, if we don't include the third weight, the line that will be developed won't optimally be shifted. If we do include the third weight like this, we train the third weight such that the line can be optimally shifted, such that the object can perfectly be separated. And therefore, we will actually get this nice line. Okay, so if you want to do the exercise on your own first, I can only encourage you to do so. I think it would be brave. Then please pause the video, and if you're done, of course, please press play again, because then I will continue with the answer to the exercise. Alright, so fasten your seatbelts, because we're going through some iterations. For convenience, I have repeated the algorithm here, and repeated the object that we have, as well as the learning rate. So, during the first iteration, we will just start with the initial weight vector, which was given to be the vector containing only zeros. Now we start with our first training vector. We know that this vector is an omega-1 element, so we're looking at the first case, and we want to check whether this condition actually holds. So we do that. We do the multiplication of a row vector containing only zeros with the column vector of elements 0, 0, 1. Well, this obviously is equal to 0, which implies that we are actually in case 1. So we perform the correction that is required for case 1 over here. In other words, we take our initial vector and we add our training vector to it, resulting in the vector 0, 0, 1. Now we go on to the second iteration, we will get our second training vector from omega 1. We can check whether case 1 is the case, so we do our multiplication of our previous weight vector with the training vector that we are currently at. From this multiplication, we actually see that the outcome is 1, which is a value that is larger than zero. So we won't be in case one, and therefore we are in the otherwise case, so case three, where we don't perform any correction, so we keep our previous weight vector. Now in the next iteration, we take our next training vector, which now actually belongs to omega two. We now check whether this condition holds. We can do the multiplication of the previous weight vector transposed by our current training vector. We see that this value is equal to one, which is greater than zero, therefore in this case, Holds, thus we again perform a correction. So from our previous weight vector, we subtract our current training vector, which results in the vector minus one, zero, zero. Now we move on to the next iteration. So to this training vector, which is an element of omega two, we check again whether we are in case two. So whether this equation actually holds, we do the multiplication of our previous weight vector with the current training vector, which is a value less than zero. So we won't perform any correction. And we take the value of the previous weight vector. Now in the next iteration, we again look at this training vector. We check case one again, and we see that the value is equal to zero, which is a value less than or equal to zero because it's zero. Thus we're in case one. We do the correction. We see that we have the vector minus one, zero, one, which is our new weight vector. Moving on to the next training vector. We again check whether we are in case one or we're not because we're getting a value which is equal to one which is greater than zero. We keep our previous weight vector. In the next iteration, we again consider this vector. We do the multiplication. We see that this value is equal to zero. Therefore, we are again in case two. We do the subtraction and we get a vector containing elements minus two, zero, and zero. Next iteration, we again consider this vector. We check in which case we are, and we are in case three because the value is minus two, which is a value that is actually less than zero. So we keep our current weight vector. And we'll move on to our next training vector. I know this is getting a little boring, but we have to do this until the weight vector is converged for every training vector, which didn't occur yet. Again, we're in case one because the multiplication here results in a value that is equal to zero. So we again have to perform the correction, which yields the vector minus two, zero, one. We consider the next training vector. We check in which case we are. Well, we get a value which is equal to one, which is greater than zero. So we are again in case three. And actually now things are getting to get interesting because we are converging. Spoiler alert. When we look at the next vector, we are again in case three. 
we have a value equal to minus one, which is less than zero. So we keep our previous weight vector. Next iteration, we again have a value that is equal to minus one, which is less than zero. So we are in case three and keep our previous weight vector. In the next iteration, for the case one condition is not met and we are in case three, and we keep our previous weight vector. Now from these last four iterations, starting at weight vector 10, Going to 11, 12, and 13, we have obtained four times the same wave vector, so we know that we have converged and we can stop the algorithm and return its wave vector. Therefore, the output wave vector is minus 201, and we have obtained the wave vector that we actually wanted. So, if you remember from the beginning of this video, the goal was to obtain these weights such that we can create this hyperplane. So, now that we have actually obtained the weights, we can construct our hyperplane. So, let's do this. So we do the multiplication of the weight vector transposed with x. This multiplication yields minus 2 times x1, plus 0 times x2. So this is redundant, and we multiply 1 by 1. So our resulting line is minus 2 times x1 plus 1. Or in other words, simply x1 is equal to a half. Now if we draw this, we actually get the following line, which is a line that perfectly separates the trailing objects. And therefore we have obtained all the answers for the exercise and we have actually achieved what we wanted to achieve from the beginning we can now separate the apples from the oranges so after working with this function in an iterative way your inner computer scientist probably wakes up and wants to program stuff so let's go into the pseudocode i'll provide the pseudocode of the former version that we discussed as it is intuitive and it should be very clear by now so first we pick an initial random weight vector we pick some learning rate rho initially we set t equal to zero which represents the current iteration. And now we're going to do the following while loop in which we start by developing a set of all misclassified training factors using the current weight factor. So we perform actually this check where if you remember from one of the previous slides that we use that we define delta in the following way in order to remove the minus sign. Now if this is the case, we actually add the training factor to the set of misclassified factors. And we do this n times where n is the number of training factors. After that, based on the set m, we perform our correction and we optionally adjust the learning rate and then we increase the value of t because we've just finished an iteration and we keep doing this until there are no more misclassified vectors in other words we have perfectly separated the objects and then we just simply return the last obtained weight factor so this is really nothing new and you may after this information actually have been able to design this algorithm yourself so let's now wrap up the video with some final remarks Something that is really important, as you've probably noticed, is that the training vectors must be linearly separable for convergence. If this is not the case, the algorithm will actually go on forever because it will try to perform corrections over and over again and will just never end. It goes on and on and on and on, etc. Now, this limitation can, of course, be considered as a disadvantage. Now, because of this assumption, we were able to derive a very simple linear classifier. And this linear classifier is actually also computationally very attractive. And finally, I want to conclude this video with the remark that the perceptron is the basis for neural networks, which is also why this algorithm is so closely related to machine learning, as I've mentioned at the beginning of the video. All right, so that's it. I've explained the problem. We've together derived the algorithm and I've explained how it works. After that, we answered a very important exercise, and then I showed you the pseudocode of the algorithm. And finally, I stated some important last remarks. So that's really it. If you thought this video was useful, make sure to hit the thumbs up to give this video a like. If you still have any questions, make sure to use the comment section. And if you want to see more of Mr. Code, make sure to subscribe. So stay cool. Bye.